Today is going to be an incredibly fun and exciting day in the fish room because I'm going to be setting this tank up and setting up a tank is always fun. So this tank right here is a 60 centimeter or a 2 foot tank, around 15-16 gallons, something like that. And I'm going to be setting this up for some guppies to come in the future. Right now you can see I've got a driftwood in there. This is the, the one that I'm hoping to use for this tank. I might change it. Maybe, not sure. We're gonna put a substrate, have filtration in here, and I need to put a background sticker. You can see the background stickers on the side right now, but I'm gonna take that off and put it on the back. I might actually just leave this sticker on here because at certain times of the day, like right now, the sun is hitting it from over here, and it's actually pretty warm, so I might want to leave this on here so we don't get too much algae but I'm gonna go ahead and put a background sticker on right now you can see kind of like this tank the cardinal tetras and the honey gouramis they look so good with a black backdrop look at these guys they're so active and they're always hungry for food even though I fed them just now but this tank also has a side sticker uh, so yeah I might just leave that one on to make it look nice and even. So this right here is the background sticker that I'll be using. Links to it will be in the description below but you can get this at your home center or on Amazon. I got this on Amazon and it's the same one as I have in all my tanks right now and I think it's better than painting the tank black uh, because with stickers you can easily remove it when you want to. I've got it on my biter tank right now. It's kind of hard to see because the lights are off but you can also get other colors like this. This right here is a frosted color and it gives it a different look but it's super nice as well. You can get it in white color as well and blue and red and all sorts of colors but today we're going for black. Got the perfect size cut out. Kind of annoying to work with while it's rolling. You can use something to weigh it down like how I used my driftwood. Or you could just uh, kind of tape it to the table or the floor, whatever you're using. But I don't know, just yeah, as long as it works. <laughs> Take a look at how good this turned out. I'm super impressed with it. There still are some tiny little air bubbles stuck in there, but it's hard to see. And in a few days, once everything dries, you won't be able to see it. Also, it's really good to have one of these in ha on hand, a squeegee. If you don't have this, you can just use an old credit card or something like that. But having one of these really makes a difference. Now I think it's time to get some substrate in here. Today I'm going to be using something different. I've never used this before, but it's just a regular type of gravel. It's a very popular one here and it's really cheap. I like the color too, so I'm going to rinse it and get it in the tank. Also, I wanted to get a 10 kg bag, but they didn't have any at the store and they only had 3 kg bags, so I had to get 3 of this. And you can see it says 60 centimeter tank, you want 4 to 10 kg, and that's a 60 centimeter tank. <laughs> Quick update on the mini rice fish pond. I haven't done an update on this in a while, but a few days ago, the surface of this pond was frozen. It was frozen solid, and you can see that the fish are in here. They're doing all right. Uh, these guys are used to the cold because they're found in the wild. These aren't exactly wild cots, but they're found in the wild in Japan, and they have to tolerate all four seasons, and we have freezing winters. So what they'll do is that they'll just go down to the bottom where it's not frozen and it's warmer and they'll just stay down there. But you can see they're looking good. I've got a white one in there as well. Yeah, they're doing amazing. I get so many questions. What do I do to this pond when it's winter, when it gets cold? And the answer is literally nothing. I just leave it alone and the fish will do their own thing. These rice fish are super hardy. What my uncle and aunt do next door though is they put a lid, an acrylic lid over so that all the warm air stays in there and it, the pond doesn't freeze. So you can do that too, but you really don't need to do anything. And also I get questions about this plant right here. This I think is called pennywort. 
if I'm not mistaken, super hardy. You can see it's still alive and it's pretty cold. You can see I'm wearing this. It's cold. During the summer though, this pennywort goes crazy and it'll grow all over the place. But during the winter, it dies back a little bit. But you can see it still stays green. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Before I add this gravel that I just washed into the tank, I'm going to add some of this uh, fertilizing root tab kind of stuff. I'm not so sure what it's called. So that the plants can grow better. Sprinkle this thing around the tank. All right, so check that out. That is the layout of this tank. Very simple. Anyone can come up with this, really. I haven't used any rocks, just this piece of driftwood right here. And now I think it's time to get the plants that I'm going to add in this tank. So the plants I will be adding to that tank are in this tank. And this tank is just looking like a complete mess. It's a farm tank right now. It's my aquascaped aquarium but now it's just holding some random plants. And the ember tetras are back in the tank. I got a few comments asking me where are the ember tetras. I've moved them back in and you can see they're all looking really good. So the plants I've got are Hygrophila deformis or water wisteria, I think. It's a super easy plant. And I've got some Limnophila sessiliflora. And these two plants are super easy, so I'm excited to get them out of here and into that tank. Before I plant these plants in, I want to fill this tank up with water, kind of like how MD Fish Tanks does it, because he's right when he says it's easier to plant stem plants when there's water filled in. It just looks better and it's also easier to get all the plants aligned and where you want them. Three portions of Limnophila sessiliflora here and it looks like vegetables. It looks it looks quite delicious, but we're not gonna be eating it. I'm gonna be planting it in this tank right here. I still don't know where I'm gonna plant each one of these plants, but I'm I'll figure it out. You can see I've added the sponge filter in here. I still haven't turned it on, but I've also added a heater because the water is freezing cold. It's really, really cold. You can see I've got a heater in this tank as well back there. It's the same heater, so it should do the job. And yeah, let's start planting this. And there it is, the guppy tank is now completely planted. Take a look at how good that is looking. So halfway through the time lapse, I went ahead and got a few more plants like this right here. This is dwarf Sagittaria or Sagittaria subulata. It's a Tropica 1-2 grow plant and it's their easy category plant. So I'm hoping it'll grow well in this non-CO2 tank with a gravel substrate. I'm not sure if it'll grow, but we'll have to see. And I will be adding an all-in-one fertilizer a few times a week. so. I really hope that the plants do well. And I also added this Anubius barteri right here. Look how beautiful this Anubius is. One of my favorite plants ever. I just love the leaf structure and it's, it's, it's just such a cool looking plant to be honest. Look at that. I did also want to add a few cryptocorins into this tank like around the driftwood and in front of the driftwood uh, just to give it a better look but maybe I'll do that in the future we'll see how the current plants do and then if they do well we can add more plants but I can't wait to get the guppies 
into this tank. In the comments section down below, let me know what guppy I should add in this tank or what guppy would you add? I've already got one in mind for this tank. So if you guys can guess, try to guess down below. I'll give you a shout out in the next video if you get it right. The Cardinal Tetras and the Honey Grammys, I just scared them a little bit there, but they always have a good appetite. Look at them, They're such beautiful fish. And of course, that white cloud minnow. So unfortunately, this tank was not for white cloud minnows. I decided to get guppies instead, but soon I will do a tank for white cloud minnows as well because I just think they are so beautiful. Take a look at that one back there. All right, it's not focusing, but you guys know what I mean. White cloud minnows are pretty amazing fish. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did like squad, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I can't wait till the plants fill in even more and we get some natural breeding action from the guppies. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss any of this and I will see you next time.